October 15, 2021 was the date chosen to mark the dawn of a new Iron Curtain. All around the world, the political, corporate, and religious elites synchronized enforcement of employment mandates and health passport systems under the guise of public health. It didn't matter that the official rationale for these measures had been thoroughly debunked. It didn't matter that the risk-benefit calculations for children were nonsensical. It didn't matter that the strikes and protests against the mandates were intensifying and were already revealing cracks in the system. The elites would push forward because they were committed now, and this would be their undoing. This date was not chosen at random. The full significance of this symbolic act could only be understood in the context of the ancient Roman tradition, the October Horse. We'll touch upon that later, but let's be very clear and unequivocal about one thing right up front. Those behind this scheme are evil. Most people still haven't realized just how evil, but something is definitely itching in the back of their minds. We need to get used to being vaccinated with COVID vaccines for the future. Um, I can't see that COVID is not going to be with us forever. Um, maybe in the future we can have even better vaccines and coverage across the world to achieve that. I mean, as a public health doctor, we always want to have diseases go, um, get totally eliminated, but that's not on the horizon in the near future. So booster doses, repeat doses will be part of it. You know, there'll be different advice about different schedules, which doses you get. But at the moment, our priority has to be getting first and second doses into people. And there will be recommendations about booster doses in the future. And I can assure you that the Commonwealth Government has, produced, has purchased a large quantities of vaccine into 2022. And this will be a regular cycle of vaccination and revaccination as we learn more about when immunity wanes. Dr Chan. We will be looking at what contact tracing looks like in the new world order. 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 You knew the politicians were corrupt. You knew the revolving door between corporations and government had eroded the rule of law. But when humanity sees what these clowns try next, it's going to blow their minds. For some, this will spark a spiritual awakening. In times of great suffering, the veil grows thin. For others, it will mark the descent into a mass psychosis. In their fear of death, they will learn the hard way that some fates are far worse. We're going to describe how this ends in brutal terms. We're not going to pander to the delusional and we're not going to sugarcoat it for mass consumption. This message is not for the compliant, the sheep who line up willingly in the final hour. These are not the ones who will decide the outcome. Their propensity for self-delusion seals their fate sooner than they could imagine. But those with the courage to look this nightmare in the face and fight back against all odds, this will come as a message of hope. The powers that be have miscalculated. Their timing is off, but more importantly, they underestimated the opposition. This will not end well for them at all. For those on the fence, this could be interpreted as a warning. For the complicit, it will probably feel like a threat. In truth, it is neither. Time for warnings has long since passed. The rest of this story will be settled by lions. You know who you are, even if no one around you has a clue. In this brief era, that we refer to as the New Iron Curtain, those who refuse to hand over their bodily autonomy are to be banished from society, fired from their jobs, barred from all travel. It starts with medical apartheid, but it won't stop there. Many of the horrors that follow are avoidable, but are almost guaranteed to unfold for the simple reason that the average person does not believe that a crime of this magnitude is possible in the modern age. They fail to realize that by accepting incremental violations of the Nuremberg Code, they are creating the precise conditions that gave rise to that tribunal. And in much the same way, their participation makes them complicit. I, for example, have been appointing my lawyer friends to the judgment of the judges and the lawyers in the Nuremberg trials. 
because judges and lawyers were brought to account in the same way that media professionals were, bankers were. It wasn't just the, the soldiers who were held accountable. Anybody in society who had a position in which they could have exercised their power and their duty to stop what happened, what was happening, was held accountable. But, you know, the judges put forward an argument that they didn't know what was going on. That was their defence. They said, well, the reason we didn't say anything or do anything is we didn't know what was going on. And the tribunal said, you had the transistor radio and the word on the street. Well, we now have the internet and the transistor radio and the word on the street. So for anybody to raise the defence that they didn't know what was happening is not going to wash according to the tribunal with the judgment, international case law, of the International Military Tribunal. Because they've already heard all of those excuses. So when, then the judges said, oh, well, we did know what was going on, but we decided that um, we ought to stay in positions of power because otherwise worse people would come in. To which the tribunal said, but according to the public, you stayed in your position and you said nothing. So you were complicit. And that, that's what I would say at the moment, that in anybody in any profession who knows what's going on and is staying silent, unfortunately, the military tribunals, the international case law, goes against them. So they need to read those, look at what they're doing and omitting to do, and work out which side of the law they want to stand on. Because that legal position has already been analysed in the past by our ancestors, bless their hearts. And the law is already there. So anybody who's not standing up, who's not you know, actively stopping harm from happening to all of us, is not complying with the law. So are we headed for a second Nuremberg trial? Yeah, basically. So how do we get to Nuremberg 2.0? How do we get from point A, medical apartheid and coerced experimentation, to point B, justice with teeth? The short answer is war. The elites have declared it on their own people. They marked it symbolically by choosing October 15th, the sacrifice of the October horse. In Roman times, this was an offering to Mars, the god of war. In this context, Translation is very simple. They are starting this war on purpose, and they intend to use it to their advantage. But in their arrogance, they have committed many grievous errors. Their invocations are corrupt and profane. They have transgressed common law, international law, and spiritual law. The forces they have awakened cannot be bent to their will. They will reap no benefit by invoking the red horse, nor will the black horse ride down the path they have planned. Scales do not find in their favor. They will get their war, a real war with all of its horrors. They will also get their famine to accompany their plague. They'll even enjoy a brief moment when it seems as though they've won, but they will not like what comes next. Even as the final cards of their tower were put into place, the wind was already beginning to stir. Errors were compounding. The timeline was becoming less and less realistic, and even the trick of their sleeve would go terribly wrong. Rather than gain power, they would lose everything. They would run and find no refuge. The tribunals would be decisive, the executions public and brutal. Their names and crimes will live in infamy for generations. You will hear of civil wars that cross borders in unexpected ways. You will hear of monuments and strongholds toppled and burned. Even the evil that hides within the church will be given no quarter. This is how their story ends, and a new era begins.